everyone and welcome to Biology Professor. Today we're talking about Punnett squares, particularly how to use Punnett squares in a dihybrid cross. Now, to get started, let's review what Punnett squares do. They are simply diagrams that show the possible, so they predict the possible combinations of gametes. Remember that gametes in humans are the sperm and the egg. So the gamete from the mother and the gamete from the father that join in the process of fertilization to create offspring. Now, there are three different kinds of crosses. There are monohybrid crosses, which follow the alleles for one gene. There are dihybrid crosses that follow the alleles for two genes simultaneously. Remember that alleles are simply alternative forms of genes. Now, I have another video on monohybrid crosses. I recommend that you watch the monohybrid cross video before watching this video so that you can learn about some of the notation used in drawing Punnett squares. There's also the test cross. The test cross is a type of cross used to determine the genotype, so the genetic makeup, So the test cross is used to determine the genotype of an individual if you don't know what it already is. So if you're interested in test crosses, see my video on that subject. But today we are focusing on dihybrid crosses. Now remember that when we're talking about genotype, that's the genetic makeup. So which alleles an individual has. The physical appearance of the individual is called a phenotype. Now, to talk about dihybrid crosses, we're going to be using a famous example, and that is Mendel's peas. So, with Mendel's peas, there are two different alleles for seed color, yellow and green. Yellow is dominant, hence the use of the capital letter. There are also two different alleles for seed appearance or texture or shape. These are smooth and wrinkled. Smooth is dominant, hence the use of the capital letter. And again here, green and wrinkled are recessive. That's why we use lowercase letters. Now, in this dihybrid cross, we're going to use two different parent plants that are heterozygous for both genes. Remember, heterozygous means they have two different alleles. So both of these parents have the dominant allele and the recessive allele for color, and the dominant allele and the recessive allele for texture. However, because the dominant phenotypes, yellow and smooth, mask the recessive phenotypes of green and wrinkled, even though these parents carry a green and a wrinkled allele each, the parents themselves would have seeds that are yellow and smooth. Now let's look at the possible gametes. You see that with each of these parents, they can have gametes that have two dominant alleles, because they each have two of those dominant alleles, two recessive alleles, or there are gametes for dominant color, recessive texture, or recessive color, dominant texture. And we know this because of the law of independent assortment, which means that these alleles will sort into gametes independently of each other. If you're interested in learning more about the law of independent assortment, see my video on that subject. Now let's fill in the Punnett square for the dihybrid cross. Okay, so now we have filled in a Punnett square for a dihybrid cross. And you can see it looks a little complicated, but all I have done for each square is write in the alleles gotten from one parent and the alleles gotten from another parent. And it is convention to always write the dominant allele first as long as it is present, regardless of which 
parent it came from. Now, let's take a look at the offspring, thinking in terms of genotype and phenotype. Remember that genotype is the genetic makeup. So for example, the genetic makeup, the genotype for this offspring is that it is homozygous dominant for both alleles. So it has two of the dominant alleles for yellow color, two of the dominant alleles, meaning smooth texture. Its genotype would be capital Y, capital Y, capital R, capital R. Its phenotype would be yellow and smooth. If we look down here, for instance, the genotype is different because we've got some recessive alleles in here. So capital Y, lowercase y, capital R, lowercase y, excuse me, lowercase r, but the phenotype is still yellow and smooth. If we look here instead, the genotype, capital Y, lowercase y, lowercase r, lowercase r, the phenotype would be yellow and wrinkled because we've got two recessive alleles. So we've got the recessive phenotype. So that is how you should be thinking about genotype and phenotype. Now, one more thing to mention with the dihybrid cross is the phenotypic ratio. The phenotypic ratio for a dihybrid cross is nine to three to three to one. This is simply the ratio of these 16 possibilities. There are nine of these squares where the genotype would give a yellow smooth plant. There are three that would give a yellow wrinkled plant. There are three that would give a green smooth plant and one right here that has only recessive alleles they would give the green wrinkled plant. So that is what the nine to three to three to one ratio means. That is it for today, talking about dihybrid crosses. Remember, if you're interested in this subject, to see my other videos on the monohybrid cross, the test cross, and the different laws of Mendelian inheritance. So the law of independent assortment, the law of segregation, and the law of dominance. Thanks for watching.